This is the Surface Laptop 7. Today, we are going to set this up. I'm gonna give you my initial thoughts and we're gonna install a bunch of software to make sure that it's compatible. In the box, you've got the laptop, a 39 watt charger and a set of instructions. My Surface Laptop was about 50% charged straight out of the box, which means I could just jump straight into the initial setup. This is your typical setup, setting your language, your keyboard defaults connecting to your home Wi-Fi, setting up face unlock, which is pretty cool. Instead of having a fingerprint sensor, it will detect your face and automatically unlock for you. This feature seems to work really well. It was consistently unlocking my laptop within a second and also, more surprisingly, working in a dark room at night. It will then do a bunch of updates. At the time, I was getting about 150 megabits per second download speeds, and in total, the entire setup took about 30 to 40 minutes. On the left-hand side, we have a headphone jack, USB-A, two USB-C ports, and then on the right, we have the charging port. The charger is just a magnetic charger that slots in on the side like that. In terms of design, this is hands down the best looking laptop I have owned to date. For comparison, here it is next to the 2017 and I think the 2022 MacBook Pro model. This is the sapphire color or fancy word for blue. It also came in June, which is kind of like a goldy color, which also looked really nice as well. The trackpad is really nice to use. Scrolling feels very similar to the Mac. The main difference being the feeling and the sound of the click. In terms of the keyboard, the layout and aesthetic is really nice. However, coming from a mechanical keyboard, I do prefer the MacBook Pro keyboard touch and feel. It's still a lovely keyboard, it's just a bit different to what I'm used to. My only complaint with the keyboard is the backlighting isn't very bright. In broad daylight, you can barely tell. I mean, this is on its highest setting. The screen itself is nice, however, you are going to experience a bit of glare if you are in direct sunlight, which can be quite annoying. The touchscreen is quite responsive when I'm moving things around, snapping it into place. This is me resizing, so I just wanted to check this because I did see other reviewers um, say that this wasn't working quite well, but as you can see, very responsive, very quick, which is nice. Some final remarks and then we'll go on to software compatibility. So the Surface Laptop that I got was the Surface Laptop 7 with the Snapdragon X Plus, which is the entry level version. There is also a more expensive version called the X Elite, which has that faster chip. According to multiple different benchmarks I've seen online, the performance difference is around five to 10%. Now this is a 16 gigabyte of RAM variant with 512 gigabytes of storage purchased in the Australian market. Now it does appear other regions like the US have the 32 gig option available. And on the Australian side, if you head over to the Microsoft store looking at their business section, it does look like they may have plans to release the 32 gig version sometime later in September. If you're wondering whether you should get the X Plus or the X Elite, it's honestly up to you if you wanna fork out the extra three to $400 for a five to 10% performance improvement. I went for the X Plus 512 gigabytes of storage only because my MacBook Pro died and I didn't want to spend lots of money to fix it. And also at the same time, my home PC died. I had a dire need to get something quick smart and this is the only variant I could get in the Sapphire Blue. Now, when it comes to storage, because I got the X Plus, they do have a 256 gigabyte storage option. It wasn't available, which is why I didn't get it, but I would recommend purchasing the smallest storage option possible as long as all the other specs remain the same for the variant you're after. And the reason I say that is it's extremely easy to replace the SSDs on these. They simply pop out, you take the back cover off, and you can unslot the SSD drive. For like $200, you can chuck a two terabyte SSD in there, get better performance and not pay $1,000 for the top of the range storage. Overall, this is the best looking laptop I have seen on the market. What's really nice is there's like no fingerprints. I've been putting my fingers all around this and like it's still clean, which is really nice. Now let's have a look at software compatibility. I currently have a keyboard and a mouse plugged into my monitor and I wanna see if I can connect it to my Surface Laptop 7 via a generic dongle instead of having to purchase their dock. So let's take a look. We're gonna plug this into one of the USB-C slots. All right, it's picked up the desktop. However, the resolution isn't quite right. The mouse is working and the keyboard as well, which is a good sign. 
Let me see if I can fix up the resolution. Okay, if I duplicate the settings, I don't get the full real estate of my wide monitor, but if I go extend, it works perfectly fine and I get the full real estate. That's looking really nice. I've got my main monitor, my keyboard, my mouse, my extended monitor there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and see if all the software I need will work with this ARM-based processor. I've been editing the video you're watching right now in DaVinci Resolve for the last hour and I can say it's worked really well. The performance is super snappy, but I did hit one snag that I wanna show you now. Now, all of this timeline footage is 4K H.264. Um, it works really well, so I can play my timeline footage seamlessly. I can click around with no issues. Um, yeah, clicking around, it's really quick. However, I unplugged my laptop and took it around the house, plugged it back in, and now I can't scroll around. I can't move that and I can't readjust these panels. Now, closing and opening the software fixed the issue. I'm able to scroll again and readjust my panels. So while performance for video editing is really good, I was able to edit this entire video on the Surface laptop itself. However, because you have to use the public beta version of their software, you are going to run into those weird, quirky kind of software related issues. Now I also installed a bunch of software. I can confirm Google Chrome, Firefox, Canva, Notion, Spotify, CapCut, Steam, they all work on this laptop. I was able to get Wallpaper Engine running so I can have my dynamic backgrounds. In terms of games, this laptop performs very poorly. I tried Power World, it just ran like garbage. It did, however, play less GPU-intensive games like Octopath Traveler 2 quite well, but there have been reports by others for online games of anti-cheating software being detected because you're on an ARM-based processor. So while I love this laptop, do not get it for gaming because you will be disappointed. My overall initial impressions of this laptop is it's a really nice looking laptop. And while I know not every game or application is going to be supported based on the ARM architecture, I'm more than thrilled that I can edit 4K videos in DaVinci Resolve and all of my basic tools for content creation that I need just work. This laptop is not going to be for everyone, but so far I am really impressed with the look, the aesthetics, the build quality, and the performance. Now I am going to be using the Surface Laptop 7 as my main computer for the next couple of months. I'll post a follow-up review in a couple of weeks. Not of benchmarks, but actual real-world performance. I want to give you tangible feedback based on actually using this device day in, day out. If you have any questions or want me to check out any software compatibility for you guys, let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, consider subscribing where you'll get new tech content every single week. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.